Hi. A few days ago, maybe a week or two ago, I made the statement that I would like to discuss what a, an extraterrestrial communication, if it ever came about, would consist of. And the reason I did that was there had been some, a few articles in both the popular press and in some astrobiological um, sources about what such a, a language might, if it ever is found, be. What might it be? Um, it's a pretty interesting question. Now, the idea that there are other evolved civilizations within the universe and within communicating distance of the Earth is very controversial. There are different scientists who take different views on this. A lot of scientists, or some anyway, take the rare Earth hypothesis um, as their guide. And the rare Earth hypothesis basically says that life on Earth is a quirk. It's a very, very unusual thing in the universe. And we're likely the only species to have evolved to the point that we have. <clears throat> and, you know, that's maybe a possibility, all right. Although when you look at the numbers of stars and you look at the fact that we are discovering extrasolar planets on a constant basis. The numbers are in the hundreds now, and some of these are Earth-like. They're a little bit harder to find because smaller planets are more difficult to detect, but there are a lot of them out there. So it's just possible that the rare Earth people, uh, the idea that the Earth is the only evolved civilization are wrong, and maybe there are other civilizations. Is it proven? No. It's a hypothesis. Science has to begin somewhere to understand phenomena that it hasn't come to grips with yet. Carl Sagan is one of my favorite um, writers, and has been forever. And I don't know if you read his really, really excellent novel, Contact. But in that novel, he has the first communication, and really all the communication, between the extraterrestrial civilization and um, the Earth consist of a language made up of prime numbers. And that's pretty fascinating in itself, because prime numbers have some very unusual qualities. If you want to know in depth more about what prime numbers can and cannot do and what they are, um, you might try finding a book by Marcus uh, de, Sotoy, de Sotoy, and he has taken Richard Dawkins' place. Um, he's taken R Richard Dawkins' professor's chair since, his, since Dawkins' retirement from Oxford. And his background is in mathematics, uh, de Sotoy's is. And he has a really neat book out called The Music of the Primes, and it will if you've forgotten from your math classes what the primes are, it will reintroduce you to them and tell you some of the unique features that, that they have and why, why they're so interesting. Now, on the surface, primes are pretty obvious things. A prime number, as you likely remember, is any number that is divisible only by itself and one. So that means that, of course, one is not a prime, but two is a prime, and it is the only even number that is a prime. Primes can form certain patterns. For example, the more primes you have, I mean, the more the list of the primes, uh, the more the list of the, the real numbers that you have, the statistical number of primes decreases uh, as you get more and more numbers. That's, that's kind of interesting in itself, but it ha they have all sorts of interesting qualities. So the idea that any extraterrestrial language might be based on 
on the primes is fascinating. There are also some speculators who say that it could be based on the value of pi, which if you remember is three point, and then it goes on forever, one forward, blah, it goes on forever. <laughs> Um, so it could be that. But the primes would be more interesting, I think, to use as an extraterrestrial um, source of... Why would it be that such a source would show intelligence? Well, in the natural world, numbers are going to be... Any number sequence from any electronic or uh, light source will be totally random or be likely totally random. There are some sources from quasars and things like that that, that seem to have coherence only because of the pulsation rates of the lights themselves. But to have a sequence of primes would show that this was an artificial source right away. We know it was not a natural and therefore chaotic source. Or we would we would think that quite strongly. Um, the only person I've heard disagree with this, I think Stephen Wolfram had some problems with this when it was proposed a while ago, and, and he had, he's, I think, said that there are natural sources of prime numbers. I, I haven't really looked into the research lately, so I'm not absolutely positive on that. But in general, if we did find a long string of primes, we could just about guarantee it would probably come from an artificial source. So that to me is interesting and I'd like to know what you guys think. Take care.